Hey, what's up, guys? And this video, I know for a fact, is going to be very controversial because people very much hate it when their character doesn't get the recognition they, they deserve, they believe. But for me, this is going to be my top 10 characters in the entire MCOC, in my opinion. Say, one thing I just want to say first is um, if you've never run suicides or you barely run them, um, I don't think your opinion is not as, not really as valid, but like, I don't think you really have seen the full picture. For someone who runs suicides all the time, like me, and has had plenty of time without suicides and plenty of time with suicides, I have more of a full picture of what each character's full potentials are. So if you don't agree with some of these polls, um, with some of these uh, placements, it could be because you've never run suicides and you can't see them at their max potential. So starting off at number 10, and obviously if you disagree, you can just write it in the comments. You don't have to be all angry because your angry comment is not really going to affect me. I'm not going to change my opinion. So, okay. So number 10, we are already starting off with this powerhouse. Number 10, best character in the game is Magneto. When we're starting off the list with Magneto at number 10, you know there's some fucking powerhouses on this list. So, Magneto used to be probably one of the worst characters in the entire game. And he uh, just took the fattest 180 when they buffed him. He went from complete trash can to absolute god. What makes this guy so good? Basically the fact that if you're immune to bleed, or you're not immune to bleed... Or your metal, you pretty much just fucking die. I mean, this guy is insane. Like, I mean, if you're metal, he just straight up is 99% of the time gonna be the best option normally. Um, the way he works is basically you just parry, charge heavy, parry, charge heavy until you get to a special three, and then you throw the special three, and most of the fights are over. Um, if they're bleed immune and they can be armor broken, it will be a one shot almost every time unless there's a damage, um, re um, like cap, like damage cap. Um, basically the way it works is when you charge heavies, you build up prowess, you can build up and every time you charge up a heavy, it doubles the prowess you have up until 35 with the metal character. You can keep going up and up, but only by plus one after 35. So if you have 35 and you charge it, it won't go up to 70. It'll just go to 36, but that's more than enough. If you're not immune to bleed, it'll uh, every prowess has a chance to trigger bleed, basically. And um, it'll place like, massive stacks. Like if you have 35 prowess, you'll probably get like 20 to 25, maybe more or less, depending on your luck, bleeds on the opponent. And these bleeds just shred. These things just destroy everything. And if you're versus a metal character, at the end of the bleed duration, um, when the bleed ends, it'll all turn to shrapnel bleeds and just do a massive spike. So, like, Winter Soldier, when the bleeds end, it'll do, like, an extra, like, 100,000 tick of just shrapnel bleeds um, instantly. So, it's just destruction. If you're immune to bleed and you're, you can be armor broken, and for all of his prowesses, instead of being bleeds, have a chance to place an armor break. And these armor breaks um, are placed, like, as you hit the th special three, not after. So, your special three gets the damage bonus of all the armor breaks. And it pretty much does, like, a 1.5 million damage in most fights, I'm pretty sure. Um, you'd think he wouldn't be too good for robots because he's mutant and most robots are tech, but he cancels if they're metal, which most tech characters are, he basically just cancels out the class advantage for them and class disadvantage for himself. If they're metal, they have a reduced ability accuracy, he has more block proficiency, and they have a minus 105% regeneration rate, so you can't really heal. Um, really great thing about this character is you don't really need his armor, uh, his, um, what's it called? Awaken ability that much it's just not like super helpful uh, i mean it's not super useless but like he, the big things you need for this character he already has on awaken so yeah magneto is just an absolute beast and um what i like about this character what makes him sick is he can go on pretty much any team and just slap um the thing that's cool about him is the other best mutant in my opinion um my, not colossus but like a mega red a Mega Red's one weakness are mutant character or not mutant are um, robot characters. So he can do all the fights, and then the fights he can't do, Magneto just picks up the slack and just destroys. So the mutant boys synergize with each other really well, which is pretty cool. So yeah, Magneto for me is number ten on the list. Now we move on to number nine. Number nine 
is Doctor Doom. See, Doctor Doom, um, it's just he, the the best way to describe this character is you're not being controlled by the fight; you are controlling the fight. If that makes sense, like you make the pace, you basically just control what happens in the fight. This guy just con he basically just shuts down fights so easily, and you're just in full control. Um, I run suicide, so I don't use him as much. But I have not run suicides in the past, and seen gameplay of him. When you don't run suicides, he's an absolute monster. Um, you definitely do not want to run suicides when using this character, because then he becomes shit. Because he needs to throw a lot of specials. Basically, what this character brings to the table is uh, what do you have? Shock immunity and um, armor break and armor shatter immunity. Um, his hits are like uh, energy damage instead of physical, so he gets around like Korg and stuff like that. Um, Basic, he has a heavy attack in his combo, like Wasp, where you medium, light, 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 heavy, and it'll put a passive stun on them when you trigger the heavy. And when you hit them, it'll place a, a stagger. And the stagger is super... So every combo, you basically can stagger one buff, um, which is very key, uh, helpful for keeping annoying cosmics under control. Um, you build up to a special three, throw it, you get this massive fury, they're stunned. You do the little doom combo, if you don't know what I'm talking about, search it up. How to play Doom. You basically get to a special one, throw it, you're back at two bars of power. You hold block so you don't so they don't throw their special because you want them to be at high power when using Doom. Then you can build up to a second special three and you have two Furies. And these Furies are massive. To put it in perspective, um, when I have class advantage with my Doctor Doom at six starring three and I'm running suicides, if it crits, the heavy will do 50,000 damage just on one heavy, one bitch slap to the face. He's actually insane. His special one nullifies buffs. His special two puts a crap ton of incinerates that just melt opponents. Doom is just so good. Any crazy power gain scenario, he's probably the best for. See, so yeah, Doom is number nine on my list. But once again, uh, you don't want to be using suicides. Also, he's a, a monster in prestige, so that's helpful. Uh, number eight. On the list, we got my boy, Colossus. Colossus, in my opinion, is the second best mutant in the game. Spoiler. Um, uh, he has incinerate immunity, bleed immunity, cold snap immunity, and frostbite immunity. So he's crazy. And it also on top of it, if he's not versed in a tech character, so any other class, he's immune to armor break and armor shatter. Basically, the way Colossus works is you basically just parry and heavy parry and heavy and his he crits like his heavy is just do so much damage you basically just want to keep heaving to a uh, parrying to build up your armor stacks and when you heavy you convert your parry debuff into a fury on yourself and the fury does massive damage so that your heavy if it crits does crazy damage and basically that's pretty much it Colossus isn't that complex of a character but the reason he's so good is because his damage is so high his special two does so much damage. He has so many immunities. He's just so good. And if you um, put the Omega Red and Emma Frost synergy, it just makes him crazy. The Omega Red synergy. Okay, I don't think it's on this, but the Omega Red synergy gives him, I think, two percent attack for every armor up um, buff he has on himself. And our Emma Frost is two percent power gain um, for every armor buff on himself. So you put these synergies together and you're just getting to special two so quickly. When you get to your special two, it like um, has a chance to double all your armor. Um, so you can get to crazy armor stacks and you know your attack and power gain is just through the roof. You're hitting, getting like, cycling special twos. They hit so hard, you're immune to like everything in the game. He's just so good. So yeah, that is Colossus at number eight. Um, I think depending on the situation i mean obviously any of these top characters can be changed but i think overall colossus hits that number eight spot now number seven um might be kind of surprising uh we have Aegon. so back in the day i would put Aegon at probably like number two or three but the more i just do end game content the more i realize like Aegon's insane number one character in the game for the stuff he's number one in the game for which means Labyrinth and Abyss. But for like everyday content, he's just not that usable really because you need to like build up a big combo. 
So the things he excels at, long pieces of content, he excels at, like the shit that he's meant to, he's basically just meant for long pieces of content like Labyrinth and Abyss. That's why he's number seven on the list. If he was more of an everyday character, he would definitely be higher. The problem with Aegon is like in most quests, you just can't ramp him up because the fights are just too small. And um, yeah, it's just, it's too hard. It's just too hard to ramp him up. And Aegon, when the way he's the best character in the game is when he's fully ramped up. Aegon at a thousand hits is probably the best character in the game. Um, but the problem is most characters don't, you know, um, you know, m most pieces of content just you can't get him to nine 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 hits. Um, the other problem with Aegon is he needs to be awakened. Like he cannot be unawakened. He's just trash. Um, he needs to be high sig. Uh, he doesn't need to, but it definitely helps to have him high sig. And, um, yeah, he, he basically at a thousand hits is fully unblockable, unstoppable, combo meter thing, furies, 100% chance to shrug off every debuff, 100% ability accuracy reduction of the enemy. He basically just is god himself, but once again, he's number seven on the list because it's just in only, like, really a few base pieces in the game he's usable. He's usable for a few pass, in like six and seven, um, but, like, just most of the time, he's not, like, the best or first option. So, yeah, Aegon, definitely number seven on the list. Um, I would definitely say at 1,000 hits, he's the number one character in the game. He just he just destroys everything at 1,000 hits. So, yeah, that's number seven. We got Aegon. Now, number six, a, very, a character very close to Aegon in the same class. We got Nick Fury. Nick Fury is my number six character. I recently just ranked five of this character. Um, you don't ideally want suicides with this guy. You can. I use suicides. But to get the most out of him, I would definitely advise not using suicides. What makes Nick Fury so good is the fact that on his light ending combos, every light ending combo puts a massive bleed on the enemy. This guy's DPS is some of the highest in the entire game. If they can bleed, obviously. But I will say this: if you want to be like, have look. If you want Nick Fury to be really good, number six character in the game, you definitely need five out of five deep wounds, or like at least four out of five. I use four out of five. I'll be adding five out of five soon. But you definitely need a high deep, um, high points in deep wounds because without it, his bleed just lasts like half a second. Um, deep wounds make this guy go from decent to like just destruction. He just destroys things. Um. Uh, so yeah, the ability to just do so much damage just on like light ending combos is very helpful. Like, he's just so good. He basically can put these internal bleeds on, make him go even more. And when he goes into his second life, which is his awakened ability, the real Nick Fury comes out and he basically degens to 30% of his health. Um, and then at that point, your damage is like two, three times higher. Crazy damage. Your, um, charges or stay they don't like um, fall off um and what these charges do if you throw two special ones basically you get eight charges from each special one and that's real nick for your life and at 20 char uh, basically you'll be fully unblockable um oh shit you'll be fully unblockable at 15 at 10 every time you knock them down you can purify all debuffs which is very fun and then at five charges you can't be misservated so at when you throw, you know, you go into your real life, you throw two special ones. You can't be miservaded at all. Um, you can shrug off all debuffs, and you're fully unblockable. And then you have this crazy damage. So, I mean, you play kind of balls to the walls of low health, but it's just so worth it. His damage is so crazy. It's actually disgusting. And, you know, the real Nick Fury, uh, when I play him, I just don't try to die with a life model decoy unless it's, like, easy content. I want to farm really quickly. But that's what makes him so good. If you play him like Act 7 content, you can use the fake Nick Fury, the first life. And if you make a mistake, get a sp like special 3 to whatever, guess what? You have a second life. So crazy safety net. So that's just insane. Um, what makes this guy also really good is the fact that he's all these synergies. Um, all heroes on your team, except for him, just get 10 attack rating just for being on the team. And if he's dead, it's 20%. So that's just crazy already. Just from him being in the team, you get the heroes get 10 or 20% attack rating increase, which is great. Uh, restoration kit is really fun when you're on suicides. Um, basically, once per fight, uh, you get you can shrug off a bleed, poison, or shock. Um, and it'll um, take off one of the debuffs and regen 10% of your max health. Um, so that's for suicides. It's very fun. So like right when the fight starts, 
you'll shrug off the bleed and you get a 10% regen. And it's really fun for like characters that have like bleed or poison immune. Um, they only have the bleed or poison from suicides and then you shrug it off and you have no more debuffs for the rest of the fight and you get 10% regen, which is very fun. But it's with kind of shitty characters, Deadpool X Force. I grinded him as a five star so I could bring him into X6 in the arena. But I understand not a lot of people have him as a five star. He is available as a six star, but once again, might not everyone might not have him. Next one is with Quake and Ant Man. Um, both decent characters to bring a quest, especially like, like Ant Man if you're bringing Ghost. Um, basically, you have three. If Nick's alive, you have um, three evade charges right when the um, fight starts. So just three. Like if you slip up. Um, instead of getting smacked in the face, it'll evade. So that's just really good util just to have every fight. Um, and Quake is a character you kind of want to bring everywhere in Act 7 content. So just her being on the team with Nick, which is obviously two characters that are really good, and you definitely want to bring both them. Um, all your characters on your team will have three evade charges, so if you slip up, you're good. Um, you'll evade for three times. And um, yeah, just his synergies are so good that Nick Fury, for me, is number six on this list. Now we get into the top five. These characters are just, like, everyone on this list is obviously insane, but the top five, just so strong. Like, if you don't have them, I recommend getting them. Um, so at number five, we have Omega Red. For this character, though, you do need Suicides. And you need him, ideally, at Max Sig. Um, you don't need it at Max Sig, but it's just the damage is such a big difference. Um, I have a rank 3 Omega Red at SIG 86, and he's a god, but I think his damage could be like doubled if I get him at SIG 200, so can't even imagine that. Well, so what makes Omega Red so good? Basically, the fact that you do all your damage without really having to hit them. The way he works is when the fight starts, you have a bleed in yourself from Suicide Masteries. Um, you are not bleed immune, but you're 90% resistant to it, and if you have one of the masteries, I forgot which one mastery it is, but I think it's called Quaglate, and that reduces the effects of bleed. You basically just, it's just fully immune to bleed, but the bleed's there, but so you regen from it, from a willpower. So you just regen in the beginning of every fight, and then you're fully immune to poison. So suicides are just only a plus for you, basically. While you have this bleed up, you have your death field active, and every time, every like few, every few milliseconds to second, you're near the opponent, you build up spores, and you can build a max of 30 spores, and these spores just will constantly tick at the opponent's health, um, just being on them. And if you throw a heavy attack, you put a degeneration on them. The degen locks the spores, and the spores will not fall off if you're far away. If you're far away without the degen, the spores will slowly fall off. But if you if you have the degen on, they'll stick. So you can just get really close to them right when the fight starts, put some spores on them, throw a heavy attack, and then you can just back up and just watch their health melt. You don't even have to hit them. So that just the, the ability just just do like the majority of your damage without hitting the opponent is so good because you're not giving them power. And some fights obviously you don't want to hit the opponent, so it's just so good. His level one has a pretty good regen. It eats some of the spores and has a really good regen. Special two reactivates. Um, what does it do? It reactivates your death field and your special three. Um, removes all your death uh, spores to inflict essence steel for three seconds and it's just it just takes away all their power and like so much of their health and you can just regen like back to full if you have like 30 spores on them and you throw your special three you get like a fat like 20 to 40 percent regen it could be more could be less i don't really know exactly but it's a lot of fucking health um so yeah the ability to just be so topped up in every fight regen the ability to do like 99 percent of your damage without like ever having to like hit the opponent and um, the fact that his attacks, his tentacle hits are non-contact, so you won't take damage back from Electro, Korg. Also, a weird thing is when you verse a magic, if you push her over a bar of power and she gets Limbo with a tentacle hit, she might activate Limbo, but the Limbo won't do damage for some reason. So if you push her over a bar of power with a tentacle hit, which are the mediums and the heavies, then the Limbo won't do damage. So that's a fun fact. Mega Red is just an absolute powerhouse. If you don't, I've never seen him. Just you should search some videos on him. The thing that makes him so good is he is so well um, with um, Colossus. Colossus is another top ten lit character in the game, in my opinion. You put him together, and a Mega Red, a Mega Red gets four percent critical damage uh, for each death spore on the opponent. So if you get thirty death spores, if you have thirty death spores, you're doing hundred twenty percent crit damage. So like 
but more than double. It's like 2.2 um, times more damage on your crit, something like that. So that's just insane for just when you do crit, you just hit crit really hard. And then for Colossus, the one I said obviously earlier, you get 2% attack rate for each armor up. So it's just so good. And what parries give him an extra armor. So like Colossus is base, he gets one for, per parry, and now he gets two, so it's just so good. A really good synergy is um, with Sabretooth in Deadpool X for us. Um, I use Sabretooth when I use a Mega on War because it makes his um, Death Spores 30% um, faster to inflict, like build up to 30, and it's 30% longer rate for them to be removed when you're far away. So you build them up faster and they fall off slower, which is very fun. So yeah, Mega Red is just honestly a fucking powerhouse, and if you don't have him, you should try to get him. Um, but you do need Suicides and High Sig. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Now, number four, um, the only character on this list that I don't have is a six star, five star. Um, um, we got my boy, Human Torch. Human Torch has proved himself so much over the game recently. It's actually unreal. Um, I can't lie, I, I didn't like know much about him or it wasn't like hyping him up as much back in the day. But like once Abyss came out, people just realized that this guy is just the ultimate mystic slain god. And basically he is immune to incinerate, cold snap, and frostbite. Um, one way to remember it is he's immune to the extreme temperatures on each side of the spectrum. Um, basically the way he works is um, you just build up your temperature in a fight and you kill them. Um, if you verse a mystic character, every single hit, that um, every single time they hit you, you build a smolder, and your smolder increases the damage and um, like length of your incinerates. So if you verse a mystic fight in like the abyss, you can get your smolder so high, and your incinerates just start exponentially growing and growing in damage. Like you could take like a ten million health like Dormammu and. Human Torch would easily be the fastest killer. Like, he just like, wouldn't even be close. Like, he might not start off the fastest, but once your smolder start building up, his damage is just crazy. When he's over 10 temperature, which is super easy to have above in, like, any energy fight, because energy hits and mystic hits give him smolder and temperature. Uh, once you're over 10 temperature, or is it, I think you you can't miss. Yeah, the 10 temperature, the heat from your attacks are so intense they cannot miss. Um, so it's just insane. And his incinerates just do so much damage. You have a guaranteed incinerate on your first and second, um, your first light attack in both your mediums um, and your heavy. Your heavy builds up your um, temperature. And what makes this guy so crazy um, is for every incinerate you have on the opponent, their generation rate is reduced by 20%. So if you mix this with the despair mastery, which is every debuff is 15% less regeneration, you put you do a medium light medium just three this one combo really uh, just medium light medium and um you put three incinerates the three incinerates together are 60 percent less healing and despair the three 15s are 45 so you're doing 105 percent reduced rege um, healing so you're basically reversing it and once you stack like six seven to eight incinerates they start just completely reversing their own health and just getting reversed um human torch is the best counter for the Abyss Deadpool. He, um, I did it as a, I did that fight with a four star Human Torch. You just spam those incinerates, and he just starts melting himself. He's just rever his regeneration just gets reversed like crazy. Um, so yeah, Human Torch. He's just so good, and the reason why he's so high on the list at number four is because if you've watched any like high end war right now, Human Torch is just like so good for like all like the hardest fights. Like he's just so good for them because most of them are Mystic. And he just destroys them. Like, he, he's destroying all these massive, like, Sasquatches and Magics and Man Things and Ebony Maws. And just, he just destroys everything. Um, he's so good for, like, any fight that has energy damage, too. Like, Magneto, for example. Magneto's, Magneto's mediums are energy hits. So you parry, and then you're building Smolder from that. He's just so good. His damage is so crazy. And then. He has his pre-fed ability, which is only once per quest if you're unduped. If you're duped, you can get it more than once in a quest, but he doesn't really need to be awakened, which is really good for him. Um, I wouldn't recommend using suicide to this guy either. Definitely you can, but it's not like super helpful for him. But basically, with the pre-fight, you can activate a Nova Flame, which is 
when you go into this mode for the entire fight, you're in flame on or in Nova flame mode, which is basically instead of when incinerates, you put on uh, passive incinerates. I think they are. Wait, no, they're not passive incinerates. What are they called? They're called Nova flames. Um, and these Nova flames like are so much stronger than normal incinerates. And also no, nothing in the game so far is immune to them. So this damage gets around to every character in the game, even Human Torch himself. <laughs> so when you're in Nova Flame, your damage is just off the charts. Um, so yeah, he's just so good. Like he's the only like Beyond God tier I don't have on my account as a five or six star. And I'd love to get him. The reason why he's number four on this list is because he he's one of the best characters for the Abyss, and he's extremely good for Alliance War right now. He destroys any massive health pool um, mystic character, just like normally the, always the best option. His damage is just so strong against those characters, it's just unreal. And he's dominating the endgame content right now, and that's how I judge a character, um, what you do in like endgame content, and he is on most teams. Like if you go blind into a quest, he might be one of the characters you throw in. I mean, think about Abyss, he's one of the horsemen. So yeah, Torch for me is number four. I would love to get him. He's so good. I just, he's so unbelievably good. Now, we go to the top three characters in the game. At number three, we got my boy, Corvus Glaive. Corvus is so good, bro. His guaranteed crits. He hits like an absolute truck. Basically, the way he works is um, you start the fight with 20 Glaive charges. Um and your um your mediums except for all your hits except for the first light attack is a guaranteed crit and when you crit you lose one of your glaive charges start the fight with 20 and after you crit 20 times the um you can't crit anymore and your damage phase is gone luckily for you though um he basically destroys most things in those first 20 hits uh, most things just die um the way he works is um, he starts the fight with the, the only problem with Corvus is his first fight is always the worst fight because he doesn't have any charges. You get four charges every time you get one of these. Um, every time you knock out an enemy that is classified as one of these four, you get a cruelty in the next fight, a cruelty buff, and your crits do a lot more. So you got four. One is knock out an Avenger. Two is knock out a tech character. Three is knock out a mutant. And four is um, if you get evaded or auto blocked in a fight, knock him down. And you get the fourth charge. Uh, um, four charges. This guy's just insane. Um, he, for a six star rank three, he can pretty much punch up to like two hundred fifty thousand health, even without a charge against like a tech character, and around like two hundred thousand against a non-tech so even that first fight he still has a lot of damage range but what makes this guy so good is the fact that well let's see here he is um he's not immune but he, it's kind of better than immune it's he doesn't take any damage from cold snap bleed shock or frostbite so three of the five debuffs in the game you know bleed poison shock incinerate cold snap he's immune to three of them but he's not immune to them he just doesn't take damage to them so for like using suicides you just heal from the bleed in the beginning of the fight you don't take damage from it um it's there but it doesn't do any damage you just heal from it from willpower uh one thing i will say is you do want to run suicides if you use corvus corvus is not number three on the list if you do not run suicides if you do not run suicides he is definitely probably not top 10 even um so um what makes this guy so good is he can crit through blocks, so that's pretty good. Um, on your parries, you put do you do an armor break guaranteed, which you don't think is that useful, but when you think about it, when you like parry like Emma Frost or Killmonger, it just instantly puts an armor break on them, which makes the fight like a lot easier. Um, he converts all armors up, armor ups into armor breaks. So like you fight Red Skull, you parry, and all of his armors turn into armor breaks. His damage is crazy. Um. Special 2, when you activate it, it's fully unblockable, by the way. And it's, like, most of his damage is a special 2. Special 2, all of them are hit crit, and they do so much damage. And if they're at max power, um, it'll drain 20% of their power if your glaive charges are up, which is very helpful, um, just because it's just there. <laughs> um, it's just very nice to have in case you push them over 3 bars power, you throw a special 2. And then what makes him so cool is his awakened ability is while... Um, 
you know, glaive, um, like the glaive charges are active, you can't die. Um, if you would take like a, if you're like at 1% health and you have 20 glaive charges, if you were to get punched in the face once, you just remove four charges and you go down to 16. So, and if you perform a well-timed block, only two of them are removed. So what makes this so good is like, you go into in a fight, that's like, say the node is like inflicts degeneration, incinerate, poison, you, you, you just like, you verse an electro on top of it. If you just intercept, you can't die. Like you're t you're, you're just take you're just stuck at one percent. The degeneration, the poison, the incinerate, electro's damage back, it can't kill you unless you make a mistake and you get smacked in the face. But if you play well, you can play Corvus to its full potential at one percent health and it'll never die. That's what makes him so good for AQ. There was a stat I think Kabam John said in one of the like legacy streams or someone's stream. And he said in AQ, Corvus is the most used character by far. I think, like, Quake is number two at, like, 5% of all fights. And Corvus is number one at, like, 45%. So it's not even, like, close. Like, everyone brings Corvus to AQ. Corvus is the AQ god. So Corvus, he's just so good. If you don't have him, just get him, dude. I'm just telling you, he's so good. And if you add a 200% um, cosmic power boost... Like, it's just over. Like, um, the power boosters basically give you power back for your specials. And Corvus' special 2 hits so hard. So basically, you could just cycle special 2s and he can he can punch up real far. If you have a cosmic power boost and just the 20 glaive charges, you can do like 800, 900,000 damage cycles with just like 20 crits. So he's just so good. Also, if you knock out an Avenger... In a quest, you obviously get the charge, but the next Avenger you verse on that quest, you have 30 Glaive charges instead of 20. Also, with the Proxima Synergy, if they um, evade or auto block in the fight and you knock them down, you get your charge, obviously, but you also have True um, Strike for the rest of the fight, so they can't auto block or evade anymore. So he's just, I mean, you can full counter evade with the Proxima Synergy and auto block. He's just, he's so good like it's unreal the fact that he just can't die with his working ability makes him so valuable he just has so much utility in him and it's crazy like he's just so good but once again use suicides with him because he's just not good without them because you need to be able to with, like without suicides your damage reach is not as high and it's just kind of unusable for like end game content so number two and number one um, number two and number one are definitely interchangeable. Definitely the top two characters in the game. If you've played this game for a while, you know who they are. But I'm going to make a statement. Um, right now, 2020, I would say Ghost is number two. And Quake, obviously, is number one. But I will say this. In the next few years, if this game's still up and we got rank five, six stars, Quake won't be in the top ten anymore, I don't think. When people have a choice between their rank 5 Magneto as a 6 star, okay, rank 5 Magneto, uh, who's number 10 on the top 10 list, or rank 5 5 star Quake, he, he's probably above her because the attack will just be such a crazy difference. Quake, in it, she's only um, a, released as a 5 star. They didn't release her as a 6 star because she's so OP. But I will say this, in a few years from now, um, we got rank 5, rank 4, 6 stars. I don't believe Quake will be in the top 10 anymore. I just don't. Because right now in Act 7.1, the health pools are like six, 700,000. And by the end, like for the bosses, and the normal fights are like four or 500,000. When we get to the end, all the fights are going to be like a million health. And Quake, she just, at that point, she just, she could do it, but it'll take so long. It's unreal. So right now, I will say Ghost is number two. But this is the 2020 list. Ghost is a character who basically is fucking busted and broken in every way. Um, her She doesn't need to be awakened, which is very helpful. In my opinion, she needs suicide. She doesn't need them, like Omega Red or Corvus. But they're very nice to have. They pretty much is zero downside to Ghost with suicides. Basically, the way she works is if she's awakened, she starts the fight phasing. Just right when the fight starts, she gets rid of the poison and um, bleed on her if you run into suicides. And she changes them into fury, um, furies. What makes her so good is, where is it? While phasing, okay, any damage over time debuff that she gets on her 
will instantly be converted into a Fury passive, increasing the attack by 3,000. That's a very high number. And they have a 100% chance to miss when, while she's phasing. So basically, you start the fight, you swipe back, you phase for two seconds, they come attack you, they hit into your into you, but they miss, and then you just counter them. So Ghost is like the only character in the game, really. Or not the only character, but she's the best character of the game at. She makes her own openings. You do not have to rely on parry at all. You could go into a fight with one health, and if you play perfectly, you never have to take a single block, and you don't have to worry about intercepting, really. Um, and while you phase, you gain a precision passive for six seconds, which guarantees your next hit to be crit. And while the precision is active, they cannot evade. So you never have to worry about that. And basically, what she has to offer is she can make her own ins. And if you attack like right when they swipe into your phase, the game counts it as an intercept. So there are some nodes that want you to intercept. She just busted for that, even though you're not really intercepting. She makes her own openings. Her damage is insane. Her special two is insane. Um, her synergies are just and like just all of them are so good wasp and hood are the main ones really wasp you really want to have her on the team basically um with, with wasp your special attacks are unblockable while you phase so what that means is when you use ghost you want to swipe back to phase and then activate your special two at the exact same time so so it guarantees um if you swipe back with your um, phase and third special two right away all three um, hits of the special two will crit which is big damage, and with Wasp, it's fully unblockable. So even if they're like right in front of you and they're holding block, you can just swipe back to a special two and it'll be fully unblockable, knock through their block, and then all three of them will crit. Special two is massive damage. And then the hood synergy is you take no damage while phasing. So say you're on a fucking lane that's like 300% power gain. Oh, do a five hit combo. They're at special three, swipe back. They throw their special three while you're phasing, and you can just infinitely tank special threes without taking a single point of damage. It is so goddamn good. And if you're in a quest where you really don't need that much utility, you can also throw Ant-Man on the team, which is 15% attack for each buff on Ghost. And Ghost gets a lot of cruelty and fury buffs over the fight, so which makes her hit even more crazy. Ghost basically is a character where you can play on 1 HP, immune to all debuffs in the game, um, crazy damage, and then can tank special threes. And she's just so good. And same thing with Corvus, if you throw a tech power boost in her, you can just cycle special twos and everything just dies. Ghost is so fucking good. And Ghost will be, I quote me on this, she will be the number one character in the game soon. Once rank four or five, six stars come out, Quake is going to be left behind because her damage just won't be there. It'll just take too long. And I think people would just rather use a different character at that point. Um, but at this point... We aren't in that era, and Quake still is the number one character in the game. Uh, what makes Quake so good? Um, her heavy attack, that's basically it. Quake is probably the most simple character in the game. She doesn't need to be awakened at all. Her awakening ability is quite useless, honestly. Basically, all she does is hold heavy. The way this character works is when you charge your heavy, the next hit, when they charge into you, um, will, you'll, you'll evade. Because um, they have 100% chance to... Um, um, they have a concussion on them and they'll miss you and you'll just evade and then what you want to do is you want to go in the corner the left corner hold heavy evade then swipe back then hold heavy evade the third hit swipe back and then hold heavy and evade the fifth hit so basically what this does is you have a way if you master well you never have to touch the opponent at all and you do all your damage from your heavy aftershocks that um, apply when you hold heavy what this does is it just it gets around everything in the game basically her damage um is just from or like a deep uh, like a damage over time so it gets around like do you bleed and like shit like that um or like the ones that say like you do 90 percent less damage unless you have like a shock on them or something like that and she just gets around everything in the game she gets around like the reason why she gets around everything is because when you charge is heavy, they have a concussion. And concussions reduce opponent's ability accuracy by 100%. So, say you have that node encroaching stun every 20 seconds. If you don't throw a special, you'll get stunned. So, with Quake, you just hold heavy. And right when the timer goes over the stun thing after 20 seconds, as long as you're holding heavy and you have a concussion on them, the node will just turn off. Quake turns off nodes. She never has to touch the opponent. So they never gain power. So like Magic, Dormammu, all these annoying characters. Like you just don't have, you just turn them off basically. You turn off what makes the fight hard. 
Um, she just destroys... She can, like, just do everything, really. She can theoretically one-shot most bosses in the Abyss if you have all day. But, I mean, she can do it. That's the thing with Quake. She, like, not... When you, whenever you're in a quest and you're like looking at a node that just looks completely BS, you're just like, Quake can probably do it. That's just the theme with Quake. That's why they didn't release her as a six star because she can do more node combinations and more characters than any other character in the game. She can do that. She is she can handle the most fights in the game. That's what makes her number one right now. Um, just her and Ghost combined on the same team can handle like ninety nine percent of the fights in the game. That's what makes these two so much better than everyone else. They're just, they're so good for so many fights, these two. I, you can make an argument for Ghost being number one, but Quake is the better character as much as I don't want to admit it, because I don't like playing Quake that much. She is the better character. It's just, it, in Endgame, you just, it's, it's true. Like, last season of AQ, the Doom boss, I mean, everyone was just didn't Quake for it. Like, it was just not hard. I, I one-shot the Doom boss, like, every few days. Like, I, I one-shot that boss almost every day with Quake. I was the boss killer. It was really just not hard. Pretty much everyone brings Quake in AQ. I mean, as I said, Corvus is number one for AQ. Quake is number two. You know why? Because she just gets around a stupid node. The node that's, what, 400% power gain? Say there's a node in the future that's like, oh, the 1,000% power gain. You hit him one down, they go straight to special three. Oh, and just use Quake. You just never have to hit him. It's <laughs> just that simple. Oh, you're versed in a magic? You don't want her to get over a bar power for the limbo? Oh, just use Quake. She'll never gain power. Like, she just is so busted. It's, like, not fair. So that is my list. Um, honorable mention, uh, Warlock. I would probably put it at number 11 um, if I had to. Warlock's very good, but yeah. So the list recap is number 10, Magneto. Number 9, Doom. Number 8, Colossus. Number 7, Aegon. Number 6, Nick Fury. Number 5, Omega Red. 4, Torch. 3, Corvus. 2, Ghost. And 1, Quake. So that is my list over the... 2020 year um at 2020 at this time i think that is the order um if you have a different opinion you can write it down below um and write why i don't really mind reading that that is cool um obviously not one of these characters is better for every scenario like there are some scenarios where like fucking like medusa is better than quake probably in s at least one scenario but <laughs> my point is i mean it's not a not not a solid list that like every single fight Corvus is going to be better than Nick Fury because he's high on the list. This is just an overall guide, a um, very rough guide. Any fights, number 10 can be better than number 2 or, like, anything like that. So just don't take it, like, face value. Like, they're, like, 100% better in every way. Um, so, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, tell me your top 10 in the comments below. Like, just write, like, in the comments, like, 1 through 10 what your list would be because I'm curious to read those. I want to see what you guys think. So, yeah. Holy shit, this is a long video. This is 43 minutes. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Get a like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.